just right over here to kind of give you an idea of where this place is located. If we keep looking south back here, this over here is the Isleta Reservation. Socorro's back here. Belen and Las Lunas are right over here. So that kind of gives you an idea for those of you that know your New Mexico geography. And way back here, you can see the mounds of Grants. And if you squint very hard, you can kind of see the, San the Santa Fe Mountains right back here. So you can actually see a lot on top of the solar tower. It's really, really tall, about two to 300 feet tall. So down here, you see the heliostat fields all down here. And this is the control tower, tower I was talking about. This is our solar furnace. This is where we built everything. This Tetris looking object or block looking object is where we actually build everything that you see. So I'm gonna show a little quick video of what it looks like on top of the tower whenever we're getting ready to test. So let's see if this will load a little bit. So this is the solar furnace. Oh, this is actually our solar furnace. So we have to wear these other protection goggles so we don't get blinded by the very intense light inside the system. We're doing all this materials testing. This is, we use robotics. So those of you that actually know about robotics, you can see this little robot doing work in this high temperature environment. And we need to wear those goggles. Otherwise you could potentially go blind. That's how, in, that's how um, intense the light can be. So we don't want to hurt ourselves because this light can be very bright, like a little mini sun. And that's what happens over a little solar simulator. Um, We've had very important people. We've had presidents come. We've had uh, different, very big politicians. We've had celebrities come. Uh, we, I don't know if anyone's heard of Leonardo DiCaprio or Arnold Schwarzenegger. And we've actually had movies. Um, well, we haven't had it yet, but Transformers wanted to do a movie in here, which I thought was pretty interesting. Uh, then we have our solar furnace facility. Um, actually, let's go back to the tower before we go over there. So this right here is our falling particle receiver. This falling particle receiver is what I was telling you about, where you actually pour sand and you heat up the sand to produce electricity. So I'm going to show a little quick video of this falling particle receiver, which I think is pretty cool. Let's see if I can get it going. Uh, it's moving along. Okay, so maybe it's not working yet. But what's neat about our solar uh, falling particle receiver is that it's really high up in the air. The higher you go up in the air, the more the mirrors can heat up things uh, to a higher temperature. So that's very important. Uh, over here, we have another person working where they're setting up what's called the calibration panel. And this calibration panel tells us how much heat is actually going to be going onto that sand that's pouring down. It's very important to have this. It's called an instrument. An instrument is anything that you can use to measure something. And so measurement is important. It's like baking a cake, but we're using it to do solar energy research. All right, let's see if this has buffered. Yes, it has. So this is our falling particle receiver. Uh, it recently won an R&D 100 award. And you can see all the mirrors moving. This is what happens whenever we do testing. The light gets onto the falling particle receiver and you could see even some of the smoke that comes out. This is my colleague, Cliff Ho, who does uh, the research and is a, another scientist that works with me that works on these falling particle receivers. Right next to him, you see this other molten salt engine. That, uh, that's kind of the work I do, is building these different types of uh, receivers that go into an engine to make power. So that's... Uh, there's a lot of important uh, design work that we do to make all these really intricate tubes. These intricate tubes is very similar to what we put into the space shuttle in the propulsion system to make the rockets go really high up in the air. So there was uh, other areas in the falling particle receiver. You see the falling particles. They Again, they look like sand. And as they fall, they hit these little buckets. And those little buckets is what actually produces power. This is what the sand looks like. You'll notice that it's a dark color. If any of you have ever worn a black t-shirt out in the sun, you get really hot. So we make sure that the particles are really dark because that means it'll absorb a lot of energy. Uh, so as scientists, we get to do a lot of really cool experiments. This is another type of personal protection equipment. We put this uh, little mass on so that way we don't breathe in those particles and hurt our lungs. So again, we have to wear 
important uh, personal protective equipment. So that's a little bit about our uh, falling particles uh, at our solar tower. I think my internet's uh, slowing down a little bit, so we'll go ahead and just move away from that. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Yeah, there's a couple questions. Uh, Lilia is asking about sort of how safety has changed through time, like uh, your safety measures now um, uh, versus uh, back in the day. Good question. Very good question. Uh, safety has become very, very much important. In order to push the limits of state-of-the-art technology, which means stuff that's never, ever been done before, ever, it becomes somewhat dangerous. And in order to do dangerous type research, you have to very well protect yourself. Um, so, you know, it's, it's what we call risk and risk, uh, risk aversion. So what we do is we put on all of this protective equipment, which people in back in the day, they just didn't know any better. They didn't think that they needed to wear goggles or put on masks because they didn't know how, um, with modern medicine, how things were going to impact their lungs and their breathing. Now we know better and we know how different gases and different things and pollution actually can impact our lungs and our ability to have good lives. So we use PPE and personal protection of equipment and safety measures uh, so we never get hurt or ever worry about getting hurt, but we get to still do this very exciting and important research. And any other questions? Yes. yes. Uh, Layla, go ahead. How do you turn sand into electricity? That's a good question. So what happens is we, let me see if this video has sped up. Well, let's just go over here. So what happens is, up here is where that sand was falling in that video. It falls into this big bay in the bin right here. And eventually that bin sends the particles down the chute down to the bottom of the tower. At the bottom of the tower is an electric generator. We're going to go back into the tower over here real quick. What does and electricity look like? Uh, you can't really see electricity. That's a good question. So electricity is invisible. Uh, it's electrons. So electrons, if, if you've ever, how many of you have ever run across the carpet or gotten a balloon and rubbed it on your head? If you've ever done that, you get basically what's called static electricity. That means that there's this little thing called charge, this little charged particle that like is static on your hair. That's why your hair is lifted up. If you all of a sudden moved all that charge in like a little flow, like water in like flowing through a current in a stream of water, it turns into exactly that, a current of electricity. And that's what we make of electricity. You can't see it, just like you can't see the charged particles that make your hair stick up and rubbing that balloon on your hair. But all that charged particles come from the little engine. Let me see if I can find that engine. That's how deep the solar power is when they built it. Uh, let me see if I can find that other engine real quick. This will show you where the engine is. And that looks up into the tower. Uh, I had it somewhere. And one more thing. There's the engine. So you're at, so all those particles, they flow into a heat exchanger. And on one side is particles. It's basically a box where it transfers heat from the particles that were heated on top of the tower to uh, water or to bring steam. And that steam basically turns a little turbine. A turbine is kind of like what you see on the back of a boat that turns that makes the boat move. But in this case, the turbine turns from all of that steam and the turbine produces electricity, that invisible electrical charge current that um, actually produces electricity for the lights. But does that help? <laughs> I think so. Um, so let me get to a question in the chat and then uh, Amadeus and Madeline, I'll get right to you. Um, let's see here. Presley asked, does solar energy make more electricity uh, than the other types of fuels that power uh, people's homes? That's a great question. So let me just show you this little chart over here. So in this chart, you can see that the cost of electricity has gone down. So the only way to answer it, will solar energy produce more than other power plants? And the answer can be yes. So just really quick to show you, the cost of electricity has gone down. There's this thing called the law of supply and demand, 
The more um, supply you have, the less demand, but it also means that more people will be able to buy it. And because if they buy it, they will use it. So solar energy uh, can be cheap enough so people use it. And more that they use it, the more you can actually make of it. So there are giant solar power plants. I'm going to show you one. This is a solar power plant from the sky. And this solar power plant produces more electricity just in like one of these smaller square segments than any coal or natural gas power plant. So they actually produce a lot of power or not any, but just a small coal or natural gas power plant. Let me rephrase that. So um, this, it can power more than coal and natural gas. Now for the bigger coal and natural gas power plants, you need a lot more of these little mirrors in order to do so. So some, sometimes we get them really big. So this right here is in Crescent Dunes. Uh, there's this place in the middle of Nevada. This tower right here is about 800 feet tall. It's super, super tall, taller than any structure in New Mexico. Going across this entire thing is over a mile. So just to give you an idea of how big this is, each one of these little mirrors is as big or if not bigger than a whole classroom. So your classrooms that were at school are smaller in some cases than these mirrors, just to show you how big they are. And because the bigger they are, the more power they can produce. And that can be sometimes a lot bigger than some of the coal and other types of power. All right, uh, Amadeus, go ahead and then Madeline. Um, don't you, ha would you have to put like some type of wall on the power to collect all of the electricity through the mirrors? No, we, we don't. So all the like, all we do on top of the tower is basically reflect light off these mirrors onto this what we call receiver because it receives the thermal energy, and all it does up here is it absorbs all the energy in those particles, those tiny little particles, and those particles are what we send down to that little engine I showed you at the bottom. That's what produces electricity. So all this, all this tower does is it uses things to heat things up. The higher you heat things up, the more electricity you will produce at that little engine at the bottom of the tower. Nice. Madeline, go ahead. Okay, so I was wondering, what's your favorite thing to do at the facility and how exactly do you do it? Man, that's probably the hardest question I've heard all day. I, I like doing a lot of things, but to me, it's actually designing. But as an engineer, I get to and scientist, I get to design these big type of uh, structures and experiments. And I would say that's the thing I love doing. I also love talking to all of you about what I'm doing at the solar tower. But my favorite thing is actually building and then actually running the experiments. That's what's so fun. It's it's like at, being a kid and playing with toys, except we have really big toys to play with. Nice. Yeah. So, and then yeah. uh, Kevin and a different Madeline uh, are going back to the sand. And Kevin is asking, does the cold sand go back to the top to get hot? And oh. then has the sand ever gotten hot enough to turn to glass? <laughs> You're a very smart kid, I'll tell you what. So yes, it does go back to the top. That's what this big thing is. Inside of it, it looks like a big corkscrew. If anyone's ever seen a little corkscrew, we call it an Archimedes screw. And the Archimedes screw basically sends all the part colder particles back up to the top. So after those hot particles have been heated up by all the heat and sunlight from that heliostat field, it goes down to the power block engine and that engine, then uh, we have to send those cold salt, uh, salt not salt, uh, particles, those uh, little black particles, back up to the top. And it's used by a little uh, screw uh, elevator. Um, the other thing that we're looking at are bucket elevators. So like mining, you have these little buckets. If you ever see these little cartoons of gold miners taking little gold pieces up these little buckets, that's another type of design that we're looking to bring the particles back up. That's a very, very hard thing. And that's the research that a lot of my colleagues and coworkers are doing right now. Good question. I think that's, that's it for now. Okay, great. 
Well, let me show you. So when we do tests on here, we have people that get to sit in this little control room when we do uh, data acquisition. Uh, let me see if that, again, this is what the particles look like. They're kind of dark and we like them dark so they can absorb energy. Um, that's important. But sometimes we like to do a little experiments that's a little different than what you normally see. So here is another little video to show you uh, some other types of things. So we also have molten salt that we can actually take to the top of the tower as well. Uh, there's some, there's me working on my little cooling system at this molten salt test uh, loop facility where we're cooling down the salt, just like we, instead of particles, you take salt. If you ever put salt on your food, that salt, if you heat it to a high enough temperature, looks like water. It's so crazy and it gets so high a temperature, like 700 degrees C temperature. So it's really hot. And all that salt, we flow through the pipes that can go to the top of the solar tower to be heated. So instead of particles, we use liquid salt to do this kind of work. So there's me kind of walking around on all these pipes and here inspecting my heaters with another colleague of mine, just checking out to make sure everything is working properly. And so we have to make sure that all of these different facilities are operating correctly. So we have to do what's called inspections to make sure pipes aren't coming apart on us. Uh, coming back here to the top of the solar tower, uh, this is a little stage that will flip right up. Let's see if we can see another video here. This is a really fun one, I think. So this is the top of the solar tower. Uh, you can see all the mirrors moving. In fact, let me go ahead and just blow it up. So this is what we're doing. We're getting ready for a test. I'm gonna let them, let you all hear them, what they're saying. Getting ready for the test. Some of our folks that are working, we can start seeing some of the Thing is getting hot. We're just testing some different little sheet materials like you see on Space Shuttle. Getting everything all set up and calibrated, getting the last pieces of materials in place. Before we, and then we have to raise the whole stage up, the little, the little sample. It's my friend and colleague, Josh. Some, and you can see how hot the sun makes something to make it get really hot that it can either catch fire or make electricity. Wow. And this is some of that code. You can actually see the heat and how that's uh, what we call infrared or IR. So let's uh, go a little bit further. You can. I know we have a lot of interesting things. And when the test is done, we bring it back down and we take a look at it. And we do inspections to see how the materials changed over time. Pretty cool stuff. Um, we also do work on forest fires. We can use solar energy for so many different applications. So we do some testing, not to just burn trees, but understand how forest fires actually can spread and cause so much damage. So in on this special tree, we have put a lot of thermocouples on here so we can inspect how a tree actually can burn. Here we go. If there's sound, we can't hear it. Oh, okay. That's oh okay. my God. Yeah, you can just see it right here. Oh, <laughs> no. Yeah, so it gets really, really hot. And so we can use the sun to basically do a test to understand how forest fires occur and how we can figure out ways of actually reducing forest fires. So this is another reason that we use the solar tower today for different types of testing. So it's, it's pretty fun stuff. Uh, let's see, and you just kind of see things moving. You can see the particles moving. So we use cameras that can go as high as 1 million frames per second. And in fact, we even had a little plane move by during that time, which was kind of interesting. I hate to interrupt, but I have a question. Yeah, go for it. Have you ever gotten close to preventing forest fires? Have I ever gotten close to preventing forest fires? Um, I, I've never gotten, I don't know if we've gotten close to it, but before you can prevent forest fires, you have to understand how forest fires happen 
or how they occur and how forest fires can spread. That's the main thing that we're understanding. But to answer your question, yes, we have actually, actually, you're right. That's a good question. Um, we have learned how to make a little, um, whenever forest fire, uh, firefighters go into a forest fire, they make these little breaks uh, along these different parts of a mountain. So it slows the forest fire from spreading. And so what we can do by understanding how fast the tree can burn, we can basically tell them how, how far away you need to make a break and how wide you need to put like a dirt road, which looks like a break in order to slow down a forest fire. So, so to answer your question, yes. We've come close, but we still have a long ways to go to really get it right. Nice. And then uh, while we're asking questions, if you don't mind, uh, Lucas is asking, uh, uh, do you guys make stuff for NASA? NASA? We don't make stuff for NASA, but we test stuff for NASA. So in our solar furnace facility, this is another facility that we have. We use one single heliostat that sends light through this attenuator. That's like a flap that goes up and down. And we put things on this solar furnace test stage, little materials that can go, uh, that helps NASA and other groups look at materials for re-entry. We're going in what's called hypersonic, as high as like Mach 5 um, type materials. And I, you don't have anything that goes Mach 5 yet here, but that we can test what the conditions of Mach 5 or higher can look like uh, up here. And so we use the light that passes through that blinds that reflects light off this big dish onto this test stage. And here I am actually setting up for another experiment over here uh, on this test stage to test some other materials. So I have a lot of different students actually that work with me. This student here is in college actually. So um, I have what are called interns. So when you go to college after high school, you could basically start working with me and other scientists on very exciting projects. You can even go to NASA and go work for them as well. So you got to do really good at math and science in your classes, get good grades, and then you get to do really exciting projects just like this. Nice. Thank you. And then uh, Amadeus has a question. Yes. What's your question? I think I forgot it. Give me a second. I'll remember it. Okay. Go ahead, Layla. Why do you have to be good at math to be a scientist? Well, that's easy. That's a good question, too. So in order to design things like that, you have to be able to measure things. And whenever you have to measure things, you have to know your numbers really, really well. And it's not enough to just know how to add, multiply, divide, and subtract. You actually have to do things called derivatives and calculus. You have to use trigonometry, algebra, and geometry in order to design these things. That's why you have to be really good at math, because you can't design anything and be an engineer if you don't know your math. That's why it's very important to know your mathematics. And so, then... Yeah. Uh, oh, Samuel's asking, did Sandia National Laboratories uh, test stuff for the Apollo missions during the Cold War? <laughs> this, unfortunately, uh, we did not. Um, that was before this whole facility was built. Uh, yeah, the Apollo missions were much before. And then everybody, I everybody really, really wants to know which of the presidents visited the site. George W. Bush visited oh. the site back in 2005. He was he came over because he wanted to know more about these dishes. Uh, you can't see it here, but there's those big dishes I was talking to you about. I'll throw it up a little picture. These little dishes right here are what, um, it wasn't exactly this design, but he was wanting to know more about these big dishes and how they could produce power with these little tiny engines. Or one of these dishes, to power one or two or even up to eight homes. Did you yourself get to see him in person? I did not get to see him. Uh, I was I hadn't started working at the solar tower when that was uh, was going on, but but he was here. Um, How long have you been working there? I've been working here at the NS at the solar tower facility for about five years, and before that, I worked on solar photovoltaics, so solar panels. 
Uh, but I will say when I worked at NASA, Johnson Space Center, I got to meet RC Aerosmith and both Tom Cruise and Penelope Cruise at the time. So, How many jobs have you had before this job? I've had a few jobs. Uh, yeah, I've worked in a, quite a few places before. Uh, everything from playing music to uh, dance instructor to working on NASA work and San Diego NASA Labs work. Nice. Our dad had a lot of I have my question. Yeah. He had 25 about or 35? 25 or 35 what? Uh, Bria has a question. Yeah. Have you built any solar panels or do you just help design them? Uh, good question. I've actually built, helped build some solar panels in the past. I actually take what are called solar cells. So I started with already built solar cells and I put them together and I built some solar panels before. So um, that in that work, it's very important because we're looking at not just the performance, but the reliability of solar panels. So I have tests and that's where you get to test them and do the real fundamental research, which is pretty cool. And uh, Dr. Amihu, I'm going to interrupt briefly because it's uh, it's getting on that time. Um, if folks, uh, I put in the um, uh, the link to um, uh, the um, the feedback form. If you all fill out the feedback form and let us know what you think, uh, you will be uh, entered to win drawings that happen every day. Um, so please um, uh, go to that feedback form. It's just a bitly uh, feedback sci-fi, um, and you will be entered to win uh, to win prizes. Like I said, that we're going to give out every day. Um, and I understand if you have to leave, um, Doctor uh, Armijo, if you want to hang on for just a few minutes, that would be awesome. I will tell you that my computer is about to die. This is a little embarrassing, uh, so I might have to switch computers and. Um, I will be uh, communicating uh, uh, via the, the chat. But I did want to give a huge shout out to everybody that participated today. Uh, I am just so um, uh, just so impressed with how curious you are, um, how engaged you are. Um, you know, science is for everybody, and uh, you all uh, are just uh, the, the, our, the, our future. Uh, so thank you all for being here today. And um, uh, we hope to see you throughout the week. Thank you. Wait, I have a quick question. Go ahead. Yeah. What's the secret code word? Uh, we don't have a secret code word. Uh, I do have the secret code word. Oh, Thank you very code much word. For, uh, for reminding me. Hold on just a second. Let me find it. Um, let's have the, the secret code word is sun. No, wait, wait, wait. Let's make the secret code word burning tree. Oh, and I got my question back. What's this? What's the secret code word? Uh, you can sun. either have it be sun or burning tree. Because of that tree. I just was so intrigued by that. Burning I had a question for him. Go ahead. Um, have you ever had it so hot where the mirror started melting? No, wait. the mirrors um, basically get unconcentrated light. They actually concentrate after. Um, so no, we haven't actually burned up any mirrors. But, but a good question, because it does get pretty hot in, that gen in the whole system. Um, how about you, a a a Azalyn? you had yourself it's Aislinn. Oh, um, what's the name of the presentation uh the presentation i have right now uh, i don't know what i tell you allison uh hold on i'm getting that right now hold on uh this presentation is um tour the national solar thermal test facility you can just put solar tour thank you and i think lilia did you have a question too Oh, yes, <laughs> All right. Uh, and actually, Dr. Armia, would you mind uh, if you would uh, stop sharing? Yeah. And I'll then, stop um, right yeah. 
And then uh, um, somebody's asking, what do you need to work there? And I'm sorry, uh, if you could say your name, that would be awesome. Okay. Yeah, uh, Jay, uh, Jay. Yeah. So to work here, you got to do really well in math and science. You got to go to school, do really well when you go. You're in elementary. You got to do really good in middle school. You got to do really good in college or in high school. And then you got to go to college. You have to go to college and go into what's called a STEM field. So science, technology, engineering, or math. That's what you call a major. So you focus all of your classes to do that. And so you do those classes. Uh, you do really good in your math and science. Go to college. And then you can come and work for me. And I'll even pay you. All right. Well, all right. I actually got to get running. I got actually got to go do some science work. <laughs> But I appreciate all of you joining me today, and perhaps we can talk more in the future. A good all right. never give up, do good in school, and then you get to be the actually the coolest superheroes around. We call them scientists. So be a cool scientist superhero. All right. <laughs> Thank Take care, you. everybody. Have a good day. Thank you.